Hey uh, YouTubers, uh, good to see you again. Uh, I'm OK Fixer and uh, I'm spending a little bit of my casino winnings uh, on something. I, I like to get stuff for my money. Um, some people don't like to get stuff for their money, uh, but uh, I'm partial to getting stuff for my, my money. I like stuff. So uh, what we've done is I went down to Harbor Freight and um, and I bought this uh, ultrasonic cleaner. Let's see if I can't get this so that it's not making too many too many crazy moves on me here. It's like it's not balanced or something. Okay, and we're gonna have a look inside, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna give it a give it a thorough test run. And, uh, first thing is we don't need these. It's, it's rare that I get new stuff, uh, even 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 uh, Chinese stuff, you know. So um, I fear that this is going to be quite small, but I think it'll be just big enough for us to do carburetors in or something like that. So put this down on the side here. And this. Chinese. Oh, that's nice. Make a little basket and you put your chicken tenders in or whatever. That's nice. Okay. Alright, I'll get this set up and uh, poke around with it a little bit. See what I can come up with. I also bought their ultrasonic cleaner. And I bought this at Walmart too. Uh, maybe we use some of that too. I don't know. It says it's caustic. Ooh, that ought to be good. Okay, I uh, filled this with uh, yeah, some warm water, and I put uh, uh, however much you're supposed to put in there, and I put some of that purple stuff in there too. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Uh, actually, I put too much in there, and I took some out because when I put these uh, two uh, Deutsch Vergasser gazelle shafts in there, uh, it's going to overflow. Uh, I have two of them. Yes, it's. I'm not kidding you. That's that's what it says. <laughs> I wonder what that means. German uh, Vergasser gazelle shaft. Okay, whatever. Uh, this one actually runs the car. Uh, this one's all jammed up with uh, with um, uh, mud daubers. So we're gonna uh, we're going to experiment on this one first. And uh, the the jets understand that these these ran uh, before they got all seized up uh, or relatively ran. So I'm going to take them apart. When I take them apart, I'm going to count how many turns I take these screws out that screw and I don't think it has an air screw. No, it doesn't have an air screw. But uh, that might be a rebuild tag right there. I don't know. I'll have to look at it and see. But we're going to do one carburetor at a time and, uh, and then we'll put them in the basket. First thing I'm going to do for this carburetor is I'm going to screw this uh, screw in. Uh, this is your uh, it's some kind of uh, adjustment. I don't know what it would be. Uh, but it needs to be out a certain amount and it's going to make a difference when you uh, bring the car uh, up to the speed you use the uh, throttle with this. The, uh, the newer models use the air screw and then you adjust this to uh, to uh, get the best speed out of it and then you bring it back down to 800 RPM. Anyways, I'm going to turn this in so I get close uh, as to what this jet is anyway in there. <clears throat> and when you get down to the bottom of it, you want to really bear down on it and, 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 and just vibrate trying to just and maybe put a pair of vice grips on that. No, I'm joking. Don't, don't twist it too hard in the bottom. So we're going to go a one. A uh, two. That's it. Two turns. Okay, so we can take it out. So I was thinking one and a half, two. Okay, 
So we take that out of there. And I think I got another one that comes with a kit. Odds bodkins. It's squared on the end. Okay, doesn't look like it's broken. Uh, so uh, that's going to be two. I'm going to write that down. Um, incidentally, I want to show you something. If you're uh, looking to fatten up or lean out your carburetor, while it's on the car, you can take the the screw out that uh, the float bowl uh, for the float, and you can reach in here with your screwdriver. Hmm, where are you? And you can change the main jet without taking the carburetor off or apart. Well, how do you do that? Well, you unloosen the main jet like so. So, I'll see if I can do it with a pick because I don't have a, I don't have a toothpick with me. Uh, but sometimes you can use a pick. Nope. Mm, well. Yeah, yeah, you got to have a toothpick because that's not going to work with a metal pick. But you can use a toothpick to get that out of there. If I I so wanted to get that out of there and show you that. But you can do it very carefully with a toothpick. Oh, I see. There's so much crap in this, it's not going to come out. I got it. Okay, that's um, all right. Let's take. And you just got to kind of remember how everything all goes back together. I'm not going to take it completely down to nothing. I'm going to take the jets out of it, choke off of it, uh, the little choke pull off, uh, little dash pot kind of a thing right here. That's going to come out of there. A lot of the times people beat on their carburetors and they dent these so the choke doesn't turn very well. I've seen that a lot. Screws are going to matter. I think these are the these screws are the only screws that go in here. They don't go in the the accelerator pump. spring underneath there. Okay, and this dried crusty piece of crap. Yeah, let's see here. It's not gonna have to go like that. And there is a there is a, a, a way to get this out of here. I can't remember exactly how Oh, you have to you have to disconnect this in order to turn that all the way. Okay, got it. I understand that now. So let me get this down, and uh, I'll show you all the parts. allows you to pull that out. Parts like this and your needle valve that you're going to replace, I just toss them to the side. Gaskets. Uh, the little uh, valve that, or the little squirter thing is just push pressed in there. I usually take that out too. Your float. Uh, the float. The float. I don't know if I'm going to uh, if I'm going to put my float in there because it, it just might destroy it, okay? So I don't know, so I'm not going to put that in there, and I'm not going to put that plastic piece in there. And I think you get that plastic piece. Uh, your idle circuit is right here, and you take that out. That's your little idle jet right there. Uh, your main jet is that one right there. That's the one that you can stick the toothpick in. And uh, it's pretty filthy inside. 
pretty dirty. Okay, and I'm going to take uh, this out, whatever the hell this is. That's another little jet of sorts. I'm going to take that out of there. And uh, I'm not quite sure what all these parts are for. I know this is a this is the uh, the uh, sprayer, the uh, uh, accelerator pump. Uh, you know, it, different carburetors. I know how carburetors work, and different are different are different. So you see, you see how one screw is longer than the other. Okay, so I know. Uh, the short screws, better put that down, short is for accelerator pump. Now another thing is, it's a good idea to take pictures, you can take pictures, but I have another uh, Vergasser Gellenschlaft or whatever it is uh, over here that's already put together and, uh, and uh, <laughs> carburetor and uh, I can use it uh, for you know, see where everything went. Of course, I can go to the book too. Um, I know you're not going to believe this, but you can't have any parts left over, and every part has to go back. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, be careful of your parts. Now, uh, you see how that went? See how that spring was like that? Well, of course the big part of the spring is going to go up against the diaphragm like that. So that's rather self-explanatory. Okay. Oh, that's nice and that's nice and supple, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, that's great. Okay. Yeah. I wonder what that's all about right there. Hmm. Looks like it's got some kind of uh, going down there. I wonder if I should pull that out. No, I'm not going to. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to give it the Dilbert dunk. There you go. Uh, okay. Maybe I can get a little bit more maybe I can get a little bit more room. have to do this uh, I might have to do this uh, hmm. there we go that's not too bad right there that's not too bad uh, if I was to take my studs out I wonder if those will come out of there well it looks like uh, looks like they're kind of loose okay I'm gonna take the studs out of there and I just might be able to get it all in there if there's never been a 400 pound gorilla on this uh, carburetor, um, the, the studs, you can feel them are loose, uh, but they just need a little bit of a little bit of gumption to get out. You can screw uh, one uh, nut over the other and you can back this up a little bit and just tighten it by hand and she should be come out come out of there just fine. And that way you can get your studs out. Don't clamp onto them with a pair of ice grips. That's a, that's a bozo no-no. And another thing I've learned too is uh, on these carburetors, uh, the less you have to take apart, the better. Uh, because if you take everything apart, chances are you're going to booger up something. And uh, one thing I do know is these throttle plates, these little plates right here, uh, they have little brass screws and they strip very easily and once you've stripped one of those screws or broke it well then you got to send it into the card place to have them fix it or you know, or you have to fix it yourself so let's try that other one let's see let's see what we can do here rubber gloves good idea too let's see what we got here yeah she's coming out of there there she is. There she is. So, no 400 pound gorillas on this so far. Uh, this looks like it might be a rebuildable carburetor, which is great. I can rebuild it and I can put it up on the shelf. I have 
two rebuild kits. I have one uh, from Walt Wolfsburg and one Chinese one. So I think I'm going to use the Chinese one in this. This is probably for a carburetor like uh, lawnmower carburetor or something. I wonder if I should put that in there. I'm not going to put this in there. Uh, hmm. I'll put that in there. Let's see. That's good. There we go. Kind of interesting what this tag says on it. I'll have to read that later. There she is. All right. Now, uh, the instruction says don't put your fingers in there or they'll, they'll explode while it's running. Something about don't put any of your uh, fingers and stuff in there because, while it's running because it might cause neurological problems or something. Whatever, there's a little fill line and we're getting close to it. Getting close. I would really like to see this completely full. Let's see if I can't get that up to the top there. It's really not necessary because that ought to be all right. Well, just a little more. Yeah, it's kind of over. There you go. Lovely. Now, let's put the top on there and start pushing some buttons. Ah, let's see. I wonder what that is. On. Oh, oh, <laughs> you gotta plug it in. What's TC? Oh, that must be heat. Set. One eighty, twenty eight, thirty eight, forty eight. Is that all it does? I guess it has a slow cycle or a excuse me a fast cycle because we're only we're only 468 seconds or something I don't know okay uh, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna see what we have um, I run this for three 480 second cycles okay it says the normal cycle is 180 seconds okay and, uh, and, and I, I'm sorry, I just can't believe that. Uh, <laughs> you know, so is, is this some kind of miracle uh, or something like that? I don't know. I don't know. So uh, it does say use tongs because the water will be warm. So let's take this off and have a look at it. Well, I see the top of that carburetor doesn't even look like it's been touched. So <laughs> so we'll have a look here. Uh, yeah, let's see. It could be worse, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, stuff looks hot and it doesn't look very clean. Uh, the water's, the water's decidedly browner. Uh, I could say, I could 
say the water is decidedly browner. Hmm. Hmm. Also, it says don't use caustic stuff in it, and uh, the stuff I put in there was caustic. So, but I also use the cleaning solution too. Uh, I use the clean the cleaning solution on top of it. Also, maybe I put a little bit more cleaning solution on there. What that is? It says a, it says a half a. How much does it say? One fourth a teaspoon of cleaning powder. <laughs> Yeah, right. How about that? And then, uh, okay. so it's not so bad. Get a toothbrush on there, I guess. Huh? Hundred and eighty second is a normal cycle. For what? What are you cleaning? Uh, nothing. <laughs> maybe you have to. Uh, maybe you have to help it along a little bit. The water is decidedly browner, so we'll we'll help this out a little bit. Uh, it says uh, don't do a bunch of cycles let it let it cool down so I'm gonna let it cool down then I'm gonna do three more cycles and see what I get okay I did uh, seven cycles of 480 seconds so quite a bit actually so we'll see what this thing looks like. Yeah, that's a bit better. It's still really scummy inside. You know? I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm thinking, what, what I was thinking is, is this would be, you know, like an overnight clean kind of a thing. Uh, because I'm just not getting kind of clean I would want to want to get it's it's nice that it's hot that's pretty cool that's that's pretty good but having to do this with this you shouldn't have to do that should I should be all buzzed clean shouldn't it yeah, I don't know and what's that all about oh look at that I know what that is That float vent is just plugged right up with crap. So, you know. Maybe. I don't know. It is hot, though. It is hot. Does it does does kind of get things nice and warm? Look at that crap coming out of there. Probably with this end the toothbrush, it would probably probably work really well. So let me uh, finish uh, doing this with a toothbrush, but I don't think that. Uh, I really don't think it's all that oh, no. An ultrasonic cleaner. I, I don't know. I would think you'd put it in there and you'd come out all brand new and pretty. You know? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Alright, let me clean this up and, and uh, go over this a little bit with that. And uh, I'll come back to you. Okay, we're back cleaning the carburetors. Um, 
uh, I want to tell you this also that uh, this carburetor here that I think came off the car, we'll have to look in the book, uh, it's a 30 PICT-1. Uh, this is a 30 PICT-2. 30 refers to the Venturi size, that's 30 millimeters at the top, I believe. And that's the first incantation of it, and this is the second. Um, uh, the ultrasonic cleaner didn't clean very well, I didn't think. Uh, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a chem dip first and then uh, then I'm going to try the ultrasonic cleaner. If you notice um, this uh, this chemical dip it's it's absolutely new. I just bought it and it's brown. So yeah, you tell me does it come like that? Has anybody else bought this stuff? Seems like last time I bought it it was clear. Now it's brown. Probably somebody's used this, put it back on the shelf. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to bump you. Okay, we're going to put our small parts in the little tray that comes along. And we're going to leave this in there for about six months. Uh, and that, that ought to completely dissolve, uh, dissolve the carburetor. <laughs> ah, that probably would happen too. Alright, and we'll put this... Uh, See if we can get that in there too. See if we can see if we can get that. That's good right there. I like that. I got it where uh, the the float section or the the section where the fuel is, where it's all it's all crummy looking. Uh, I got that. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll put some of that on there. Where I got that down into the solution. Yeah, I'll put a cover on that, and uh, we'll have a look at it tomorrow or something. In the meantime, I'm going to get my book and have a look at these carburetor numbers and whatnot like that and see what's going on. Because I want the right carburetor for my car. All right, it's been in the Berryman's Chem Dip. For about, it said no longer than four hours, and it's been about four hours. So let me see what she looks like. Yeah, it's a little cleaner. take and put them in the ultrasonic cleaner. Now, let me get this stuff off my fingers and uh, I'll come back to you. I uh, poured some very hot water in here. won't come on because it's too hot uh, and we, we're going to set that up for there 
and we're going to go on. And it's too hot, so it's uh, it didn't like what I did, so I'll have to cool it down, and then it'll come back online, probably. Until that cools down a little bit. I did a, a no-no, and I got it all... Uh, Got it all hot. Um, we're going to have a look at this other carburetor. And while we look at this other carburetor, this uh, PICT-1, and we have all the PICT-2 parts in there, I've made a basket and so they don't get mixed up. And uh, I also have on there two turns for that idle screw. That way I can continue working and I don't have to wait for things. So, We'll try that in a minute. So we can put all these parts in this. The other, uh, the other uh, carburetor did not have a spring, and nor did it have a, a, an idle jet, the uh, electromagnetic jet. It did not have that in it. So those are missing off of that carburetor, but we'll still put it together anyways. So this one should come apart fairly the same way, I think. In fact, we're going to put all this in that basket. And uh, what I will do is when I get this all apart, I will show you what I have because uh, I know you don't want to sit here and watch me take it apart, but I will <clears throat> very carefully, not, not going to do the choke. Um, I'm going to, uh, nor am I going to do this plastic piece. I'm going to uh, very carefully put them together and I will show you. And I won't run the pick two, but I'm going to try this pick one on my uh, on my car because it's the original so when I get this all taken apart I'll come back uh, came apart basically the same way there's one other thing that I took out of this carburetor that I didn't take out of the other one and that is let me see if I can find it well this has a couple of little differences a uh, couple of differences. Let me find the little differences here in this particular carburetor. Remember this is a PICT1. So it's a little different. There's our main jet right there. Um, what did I do with it? There it is. Alright, uh, for some reason <coughs> I could not uh, snake this out of the way uh, in order to pull that valve out. So what I had to do is I did take the throttle plate off and then I, I pushed the, the through and then I was able to get that out. That's one thing that I did. Uh, and uh, be careful with your throttle plate screws. If you can't get them uh, lefty loosey, go right a little bit and then come back and sometimes they'll pop loose. Uh, whereas uh, the two and the three have a, a, a main jet, uh, in the back of the float bowl, uh, the main jet on this one is incorporated in the uh, drain plug. So you have a main jet in the drain plug, which is a little different. Same thing, same, basically the same principles. Uh, this has an electromagnetic cutoff and uh, it has an unscrewable jet. I read this in the book. I was looking at all the pictures and, and diagrams and stuff. So I took that off so I could take uh, and clean that. And then also there was a, a jet right here. And it goes down in that hole uh, just like that. So and it kind of it kind of drives in there. So and then also the uh, the squirter nozzle that came out of this now. I don't know if this was some kind of piece of plastic that was holding it in place, but I've never seen one with a piece of plastic 
I usually use you able to just grip them and pull them out and, and then you can clean that circuit as well as this. Uh, this is very crucial to be cleaned uh, very well. So all of the stuff is very crucial to be cleaned. Anyways, those were some differences that I had uh, between the one and the two. And so we are going to take our parts basket. And we will lower our, our parts in there. And uh, the chem dip says... Oh, 30 or 40 minutes or something like that, and, and, and nothing more than four hours or something like that. But I don't know. That just seems not enough. <laughs> so I, I'm going to go a couple hours on this, and then I'll come back to it, and we'll see what we have. Uh, I'm still waiting on the, uh, the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. It's doing some really irritating things right now. doesn't like anything I'm doing to it. Uh, and it's flashing an error code, so I need to go read the instructions and see what it says. Uh, might have to take it back to Harbor Freight tomorrow. We're going to start uh, with the 30 PICT2. Okay, two turns. And that's two, two turns of the uh, screw to start, the uh, mixture screw. Okay, and uh, we're going to have, I'm sorry I bumped you, we are going to have all the parts cleaned and uh, I found best that a toothbrush and uh, a soaking in uh, the carburetor cleaner and then the ultrasonic cleaner for as long as it can stand it and then when I got it out I washed it with some clean water and then I uh, sprayed it with some of that and this will help to uh, keep any parts from rusting or whatnot when you're waiting for parts and things like that. I always like to have things, uh, some sort of something on them because uh, this, this material will start to, if I'm not mistaken, this is magnesium, and it will start to corrode or pit. I think, I don't think it's aluminum. It looks, it looks very magnesium-ish to me. Um, there'd be a simple way to test. I could just take and cut off some shavings and see if they would burn, and if they burn then it's, it's magnesium, but I don't want to do that. Uh, I did that with all my parts, all the parts. Uh, and um, it, it's really necessary for this to be clean. Um, sandblasting is not an option. Uh, don't sandblast your carburetor. It's a bad idea. Um, the reason being is you will take the, uh, the finish off, the, the plating off of whatever was plated and the finish off the outside of it that was finished. Uh, some call it a patina, but it's an actual protective finish, I believe. Uh, if it was magnesium, it was probably rubbed with wax originally or something like that. I don't know. Somebody could tell me, but that sounds very Germanish. Um, but don't sandblast because that's a bad idea. Uh, you'll end up pulling all the plating off of it, and then you're dealing with sand in very small passages, uh, very small indeed uh, passages, like a toothpick size passages. They can get plugged up really easy. Uh, take yourself some compressed air, and you're going to want to blow through all, all the known, your fuel inlet, you're going to want to make sure that your vent is clean. You can do that with a Q-tip. Make sure the tip on the Q comes off or, or comes with it. Make sure it doesn't get stuck in there. All the little holes, there's a little orifice right there. You want to make sure that that comes, blows through. Uh, there's sub, several orifices and several holes that you can blow into. Uh, your uh, your uh, uh, idle circuit your uh, accelerator pump and you can tell all these little orifices you can tell if they if they if air blows through them or not you can you can feel it rushing through and uh, accelerator pump there's two on the accelerator pump so you want to make sure those are unplugged or on this particular car there's two or a carburetor there's two so you want to make sure those are unplugged all your passageways are unplugged. 
and I'm getting air through all of them. I've already checked, so we're okay. Um, don't let this uh, don't let this be be daunting to you because it's really not that hard. Um, you you can follow this, or you can look at the book's uh, exploded diagram, and uh, and you can figure it out pretty easy. Okay, let me get the gasket set out, and we'll have a look at the gaskets involved. This is a carburetor that I'm not going to use on my car. Um, not this car anyways, because this belongs to a 68 or 69, 1500 single port. Um, the carburetor for my car is a PICT1, and we will go over that in the next video. Let's uh, open that... Uh, gasket set in what we have here. This is a Chinese gasket set. Uh, I bought this from Rock Auto for eight dollars or something. So we'll have a look at it. Now why on earth would you go through all this trouble when you can buy a brand new carburetor? Ah, but the carburetor is only as good as the sum of its parts, okay? So, um, as I'm looking at these parts and how they're made, I'm noticing how cheaply they are. Here's could be an original and here's the aftermarket. And it's just made out of considerably less material, but what I'm looking at is I am looking at the length of how that far that pin drops on the uh, float. And it looks to be close. So I'm, I'm glad I'm not using this on my car because if I was using this this one on my car I would use a Wolfsburg kit and the PICT1 we're going to do with the Wolfsburg kit this is a Chinese kit and it's very very poorly made if you look at um, this miraculous little piece of German engineering right here okay you can't tell but those are threads how fine that is here's the new one it doesn't even remotely look like it. It has a spot for a little, for a little gasket. Is there's the gasket? I guess that goes. I don't know. And then look at the end of this. Okay, one end is square, and the other is conical. I'm gonna go with the original German one. Now, now, you're saying, oh, well, you're not rebuilding this carburetor. The only thing I'm doing to this carburetor, really, is I'm cleaning it and I'm putting a new accelerator pump, rubber, so the pump actually pumps. That'll stop the flat spot when you step on the gas, you know, and it doesn't squirt any gas in there. It just huffs a big, when you open that Venturi up, it just huffs a big, uh, big lung of air and there's no gas in it, so the engine stumbles, okay? That's why it has a pump. And the choke pull-off rubber. Now you can see that both of these did work, but they're very, if you can tell, very crunchy. So, so this did work, but it, but but very crunchy. Okay. Now, if this kit kit came with a float, I probably wouldn't use it either. I would use probably my original German float. This says Solex, made in West Germany, and I would probably float it, which I did before, and I noticed that there's no liquid in there, and it will serve the purpose just perfectly. So many of these parts, are you, you're able to use those over again. Gaskets and stuff. I'm not going to change any jets, and I'm not going to change any anything like that. Uh, all I'm doing is cleaning it out and putting a new gasket in it. The main major thing I'm doing is a new accelerator pump and choke pull-off uh, rubber. That's pretty much all you do is to, to rebuild a carburetor, to clean it, and to put those two parts in it. Blow out all the passages and such like that. But generally, carburetors, they just don't wear out. Now, let's examine, let's examine this. What you have here is you have a shaft that goes through this body, okay? And it's, it's either bushed or it's not. But sometimes these shafts, they get sloppy. Now this one isn't. I can't feel any slack in it. Maybe just the, just, 
but not hardly nothing. But what it will do is it will draw air. It will draw air in here and it will cause the carburetor to run lean uh, along with this shaft also. It will cause the carburetor to run lean. So in the event that your carb runs lean, uh, you can fatten it up with the air screw uh, with the you know with the, with the screw but once it gets to a point where it's sucking air through those uh, through these shafts all bets off you know you have to have it rebushed there is a place that does it I'll, I'll throw a card up here in a little bit don't be daunted by all these gaskets and parts because we're only going to use three or four of them so we'll pick out the ones we're going to use uh, I don't know what this is I don't. I, I don't know what that goes to. It didn't come off. I know where it goes. It goes like right here. But it didn't come off of this carburetor because it didn't need one. So don't need that. We're going to need a, a base gasket. So let's figure out which base gasket this is. Uh, yeah, it'd be that one. So we're going to use that one. That's for the... This carburetor kit obviously is for the for, for a another another carb also. So you can save those. I don't know if this one's different? Is it different? Okay, we'll have to look at those two and see. And then one of these, that looks like for a real old carburetor. And uh, this one? That's probably going to be the one. Let's see if there's another one that's closer. Nope, that's not close. Mm, that's much closer. I like that one better than I do this one. This one here, nope, not even close. So we're going to use that. And then, uh, let's see, did we have a gasket on this? I don't think we did. We had a gasket on our drain plug, didn't we? That's much too big. That would be about the right size. We use that one, probably. It's a fiber gasket. That's much better. And uh, let's see. Okay, we'll sort out the ones we're going to use, and I'll be right back to you. Let's build the top of our carburetor first. Okay, we've taken our nut. And so we can pull this paw off. You don't have to pull it off, just pull it aside. So the choke will swing freely a little farther. And when it swings a little farther, you'll be able to put the choke pull off uh, diaphragm in. And let's see where the hole goes. See that little hole? It has a little, little orifice right there. I'm going to put that right there. And then we're going to swing this back. Let's see here if we can get this. Let's give it a turn. There she is right there. So that fits in there like that. Now we can put the paw back there and put that nut on and we'll remember to put a little tighten on that and we'll swing this around where she needs to go Just like that. Okay. There's a spring. Now, is it this one? No, it's too big. Is it this one? Yes, it's just the right size. And a cap. And here's the cap. And there's a little hole that matches up with this, the little, the little hole right there. Now, which screws, which screws go through here? 
Is it the long ones or the short ones? I can't remember. See, we have long ones and we have short ones, but we have three of one and four of another. So, logic is going to dictate the three Okay, there's three of each. Let's find the last one. Where's the last one? Where is the last one? Right there. Okay, the four, that means go into the accelerator pump, and the three long ones go into the choke pull-off. So we'll put that together, and I'll be right back with you. Next, take your choke, and notice how it works and oh I forgot to show you something make sure your diaphragm works see that the little vacuum diaphragm okay see, see how your choke works take your choke and put your little slot in there like this and turn it anti-clockwise see that Oops, lost my little paw, come off there. There it is. See that, see how there's a spring in there? I'm not a big fan of chokes, so I'm gonna back mine up a little bit. Then you take and put your, doesn't matter, can go on there any way you want it to go on there. Doesn't really matter. And the, uh, the, the screws don't bear down on them, okay? They just, just snug is good. I'm going to leave that less than snug because someday I'm going to want to adjust my choke. But just don't bear down on these too hard. Just, just snug is fine, okay? Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our needle valve in here. But I think there's going to be a gasket. So let's screw this down. And note that there is a gap there, and that's wrong. Not a gap, but it's a metal to metal, and what's going to happen is the gas is going to go in there, and it's going to continue to pump in there unless you put a gasket on that. So let's see, a gasket. Well, that, that one looks like it fits. That might be a little sloppy. Let's have a better look at it. Hmm. Hmm. Well, let me find a, an appropriate gasket and I'll be right back with you. Here's my original, and here's the gasket, and it's one of those little fiber gaskets. I have metal gaskets. They're both, they're both the same size, fiber ones and metal ones. I'm just going to use a fiber one. Seems to look okay. It fits all right. We're going to use that. All right, and then we're going to take our 14. Forgot to get it. Forgive me. Let me see if I can find a 14. That's a 13. Probably one hanging up over here. Yeah. And we're going to give that. Just don't like how sloppy that is underneath there. Kind of, kind of even that gasket out. So it wasn't hanging off of one side more than the other. And I just snug that up. Make sure your valve works. And if you're brave, you can blow through that. Okay, so you got a new needle seat. You got your uh, choke uh, vacuum gasket on there. And you have your choke. And I probably ought to tighten that up just a little. Yeah, there's no difference. It's all the same, so it should be fine. Like that. Yeah. There you go. 
And uh, we're going to tighten that nut up a little bit. We'll do that later once we get to So your top section's done. Okay, so set that aside and let's work on the bottom section. No, let's not. You forgot that. That's why that's not tightening up. Don't forget your plastic piece. Aha! I know everybody's in the background going, Hey! Hey! You forgot it! Your little black plastic piece fits in there. And so you have full, full range of the choke. Okay? In fact, I ought to take and push this forward a little bit. And if it's not, it might be set in there with a pin. Mm, let me see if I can get it forward a little more. Train for you. No, that's all the farther she goes. And the choke does open all the way as far as this will allow. So that should be correct. Okay, now we'll put this in there. And we will turn this anti-clockwise. We'll put this straight up just a little bit. And we'll put our... Now, um, one thing I can tell you is carburetor is good as the sum of its parts. And uh, throwing one of these original German carburetors away and opting for one of those nasty MPs or... Uh, or uh, or Chinese or Brosol carburetors is, is a big mistake. Originality is important as well as functionality and these are the proper carburetors for your car. And the carburetor, fuel pump, and the distributor all work together uh, all to make the car produce the correct horsepower and run as long as and efficiently as it can. Else, We'll put our bottom section together. All right, let me get things sorted out. Be right with you. First thing I'm going to put together is the uh, electromagnetic cutoff jet. So pretend I have the electromagnetic cutoff jet and I'm screwing it, get, screwing it in there. There, it's done. <laughs> this carburetor didn't have one. It's missing it. So it doesn't mean that I can't get one later for it or use another. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is my accelerator pump. This is a very important feature as it squirts the squirt of fuel into the carburetor when you first open up the Venturi, open up the butterfly, and it, it allows the car not to, not to uh, stall, not to have a flat spot. Uh, the the, the uh, spring uh, does not go this way, it goes this way, because there's a bigger portion right there, see? So the spring's going to go like that. This can go on there any four ways. We didn't take this apart because we didn't need to. Incidentally, here's the deal. Is if it doesn't need to come apart, don't take it apart. I learned that from an, from an old guy one time. He said to me, uh, does that need to come apart? And I said, no. He said, why did you take it apart then? <laughs> I told him I wanted to see how it came apart. <laughs> he says, you're wasting time. So, you know, if you want to see how it comes apart, that's great. If, you know, so I'm going to get this started with one screw. Got to get this thing centered just about right. Kind of difficult. Sorry about that, dead battery. Okay, so once you get all those lined up with your toothpick, you can tighten them up. Okay, it's got a little slot here for the screwdriver to fit.
Oh, I should have showed you that, but I didn't. On the top of this carburetor, and on the bottom of the top, top of the bottom and the bottom of the top, uh, there's little striations. And uh, the striations are where it, where it was cut. And if you look at it, the grain is going this way. If you run a sandblaster or you sand it, you're going to take those striations off. Okay, and, and, and these striations here go this way where it was cut like this too. And what they do is they allow they allow the gasket to bite. See, if you put this gasket down and you don't put any... Where's the gasket for this one? Is it this one? I don't know. One of these. Maybe it's this one. Yeah, it's this one. If you tighten this gasket down, if you tighten this gasket down, the serrations allow it to uh, allow it to bite uh, one surface to the other, and you don't you have to use any sealant. But if you start sanding and scraping on this, trying to get the gasket off of there and stuff, you're going to screw up the striations of it. So be very careful about the mating surfaces of all these components. All right, this mating surface here, uh, and oh, that was good, and this mating surface here. And, and be 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 vigilant of them and don't and don't tear them up. Okay, let me figure out what I'm going to do next, and uh, I'll get right back with you. I wanted to see what the main jet read on this. If I could find it again, there it is. And it reads just as the book says. Ah, uh, it is a. Uh, X116 main jet. Uh, <clears throat> right there, and it's for a 53 horsepower 1500 uh, H5 case, which is uh, uh, which is for a um, a 68, uh, I think, or 69. Okay, uh, so it has a correct main jet, and I looked at the air correction jet, or the idle jet, I call it idle jet, it's an air correction jet, is a 125Z. So this carburetor is original, nobody's boogered with it too much. Um, toothpick, and you can screw your main jet in, and get it started. And then use an electrician screwdriver to get it just tight. Don't have to bear down on it like it's, you know, something crazy. You can put your let me get a thirteen. I think I have one over here. Okay, mm. we'll put our idle correction jet in, it's clean, okay, we'll put this little gizmo in, whatever that is, okay, we're going to put our uh, a little squirter in. Squirted WD-40 all over me. Hmm. That tastes pretty good. And we're going to stake that. With a little vice grip action here. Get that in position. And I usually have it right in the center between the venturi and that little deal right there. So it so it absolutely squirts right down the right down the venturi. About right. About right there. And I'll 
give it a little whack. Not a lot because it's brass. Just to kind of stake that in there. There you go. Now, let's see what else we can put in here. Here's our our um, yeah. <laughs> what do they call this? I know you guys are out there saying it's a so and so such and such. I did not use the new one. It didn't even look close. So I'm not not using that. Whoops. Tighten that up. Now remember, when you get it tight, okay, right there, you, you don't want to just just turn it in there, just, you know, terrible. Okay, so you, you just, just snug it, you know, just where it's just touching, and then come back. I, I was up. Whoops. Oh, come on. Now I have to do this all over again. Tell you what. Okay. One. And two. And that ought to get us in the ballpark to start this car. So, let's see what else. Okay, our float. A little pin that goes through it. We're using the original Solex. <clears throat> That's going to move nicely. The tip's not broken or where it goes on there and everything's kosher with it. And that's going to go right there. Our main jet is in there so we don't have to worry about that. The little clamp goes right there. I'm not using the new one. Screw it. It's fine. It's The old one's just as good. And it's the original part. Now, I think what we need to do is make sure this is correct gasket. It sure looks like it. Let's look at these other ones here. Well, that's close, but no. And that's close also, but no. And that ain't even. And neither of those two are. Okay, that's got to be the right one. It sure it sure fits really nicely, you know. It, it's uh, got to look at all the cutouts on it and stuff. Okay, so that's going to fit there. And we're going to probably forget something. So we bring our little throttle gizmo back. I can't. Line everything up. Uh, this Deutsch Vergasser uh, uh, Gazelle shaft. Deutsch is German, and um, Vergasser is is either gasifier or carburetor, depending on how you use it in the sentence. And then. Um, uh, uh, Gazelle shaft that's society or uh, company. So uh, it's a German company carburetor, is what it is. <laughs> that's what it says on the top there. That's what that means. Sorry, I lost my battery. Uh, this has a faint part number, this little tag of 027H. And that is 027H1131290278, which is for a uh, H series engine, uh, H5 series engine rather, uh, probably 68 or 69, 1553 horsepower. So uh, this still had the original tag on it, quite slick. I'm going to put uh, this on there and the screw through there. On this particular carburetor, it had a number 55 pilot pilot jet, as it says in the book, and this is the carburetor off the PI or the pilot jet off the PICT1, and it has an electromagnet deal, and this has just a little check ball. 
So I guess it could have either. I didn't see anything in the book, anything in the book on this one. But it goes right there. Just like the electromagnetic cutoff jet would go there. Incidentally, you can take those apart too to clean them. So let's put that together. And this is in place of that electromagnetic jet. And it says G55 on it, and it's the same as what it says in the book back here. Uh, G55, and it shows it, a pilot jet, and it's what it's called. It just doesn't have an electromagnetic uh, little electro deal that pulls it on and off. Odd. Next, put our studs in. should screw in readily. Oh. You can do the reverse also, as I showed you earlier. All you got to do is tighten that nut up on there like that, and then the stud will screw in. You just kind of Same with the other one. You really don't want to bear down on those too much. Just put a little zap on it. I wish I had another 13. Go get another 13, Bernie. Once you get it down into the body of the carb, you can take this bottom one and cut loose. Then you're not boogering your threads all up with a pair of ice grips. Let's see which one fits. That's not bad. They're about the same, actually. I think they're the same. Okay, that's good enough. There you go. I'm waiting my 68 or 69. <laughs> I don't know. It was free, you know. So, there you go. Okay, let's uh We'll work on the PICT-1 next. Now we're going to put together our PICT-1. We're going to have a look at the gasket kit first. Uh, this is a Wolfsburg gasket kit. And it even comes with a, uh, a fuel filter for your lawnmower. Um, it looks to be a much more complete kit. Uh, again, these uh, these idle screw adjust or these adjustment screws, I'm not going to use. I, I doubt that I'll use these new springs. Gaskets is what I'm going to use. Um, 
the uh, needle valve. That's one important part I want to replace. A new gasket, a new base gasket. It comes with both floats. However, uh, there's nothing wrong with my original Solex float. Nothing in it and it floats quite well. So I'm not going to be replacing it with this aftermarket part because this part uh, by all uh, means is probably better than this part. Uh, but it, I do have floats. Uh, uh, the, uh, the choke diaphragm and the accelerator pump diaphragm going to use. Uh, I don't think I'm going to use this spring. Uh, I could use this spring on the other carburetor. So, uh, so there you go, uh, same situation there. Um, one thing I've done is, uh, one thing that this uh, 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 carburetor has that the other one doesn't is an is a electromagnetic choke. Uh, I think they call that the idle jet. So in the, in the book they call that the idle jet. Let's start with the top again. And, uh, we're going to blow out all our passages. passages in the lower section. Again, the same situation applies. I would not sandblast, nor would I uh, uh, try to shave the top with a razor blade, uh, scrape the top with a razor blade. I would try to use something very soft. There's a little piece of gasket there, and that just come right off really easy. Uh, because it's, uh, it has stippling on the top, if you look at it very closely, and the gasket is going to sit on there this isn't a proper gasket. Um, one of these gaskets is going to be the proper gasket, probably this one. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, probably something like that. I'll have to look at these gaskets and see that that looks like the right one. But anyway, the stippling again is is going to uh, allow for the gasket not to move and to provide a uh, a sealing surface, so you don't have to use uh, silicone. Uh, you shouldn't have to use any silicone or any kind of sealant on this unless somebody's really boogered up the, uh, the, the, the surface of this. Uh, the surface of your accelerator pump is also the same. You want to make sure that that's, uh, that's square also. Sometimes these get off kilter and you've got to give them a little sand on a, uh, on a piece of sandpaper to make them flat. Uh, I don't know how much of that you'd want to do. But uh, this uh, seems to be in very good shape. And so uh, I'm not going to do any of that. So let's begin uh, as we did the PICT2. With this PICT1, we will assemble the top. So let me get all the parts uh, out for the top. Train. Okay, I have all the parts for the top uh, laid out and um, what I've done, uh, first thing I wanted to do, is I've taken this nut off and I've pulled this paw aside and pushed this in a little bit and it's allowed me to pull this all the way around so that I can get this diaphragm in. Okay, the diaphragm is going to go right there and let's see, how is that going to work there? Hmm. Okay, this has to push forward and come up here like 
that. And it should, should be able to turn. Let's see, what do I have wrong? There it is. Kind of, kind of finagle that around there in order to get that in. Okay. And then I'm going to pull this paw back and put the nut on it so it doesn't fall out. Forcing anything on one of these carburetors is, is an absolute bozo no-no. You must find out why, and if it's going on crooked, don't force it to go on crooked. Figure it out, and, uh, and try not to force anything. Because stripping something like this, is, it's, it's a very delicate instrument, so we have to treat it as such. This plate is going to go in here, uh, there's, uh, uh, it, it's drilled out so the screws go in there this way. So I'm believing that this throttle plate, or this choke plate, goes in like that. then you should be able to close like that, I think. Let's see, like that? That just doesn't appear right. Maybe that's correct. I think it's the only way it can go. There it is, like that. And these infinitesimal screws will go in there also. And uh, I'm going to fidget with these screws, try not to drop them on the ground, and I'll come back to you in just a moment. Okay, we now, now have that working properly, and we have our screws tightened up. And uh, I've uh, moved our diaphragm for our choke over where this little orifice hole right here uh, we'll line up with this, like that. Uh, this has a slightly different spring. The older style has a slightly different spring. And you can put your spring down, like that. Just like that. And uh, by uh, reason of deduction, uh, we have four screws for our uh, uh, accelerator pump cover and they are the, the shorter ones and that leaves the three longer ones left over and of course they would go here by reason of deduction. So we're going to tighten those up. Incidentally I looked at the uh, compared both the accelerator pump choke pull off uh, diaphragms to the Chinese ones that I had bought uh, they are neither marked uh, or stamped with any numbers, and I have no uh, reason to believe that Wolfsburg West produced these. Uh, they probably just sourced them from the same company that I got them from Rock Auto. Uh, they, look, they look just the same, uh, which is to say they're not made out of something different, it doesn't look like. Uh, they're not cut different, uh, and they fit about the same. Uh, which is which is the fit is is fair. I I'm, I'm not saying that they're that they're fit bad or anything like that. They they fit fine. Okay, we're going to check our diaphragm spring. That indeed does work. So we're going to take our plastic choke piece, and you see this little notch right here. This little notch has to go in that little notch. I've seen where these don't work, where people have grabbed a hold of them with a pair of pliers and squeezed. Uh, mine is nice and round still. 
you want to make sure each uh, piece you put in uh, it continues to operate properly. Your uh, choke goes anti-clockwise you will see it close. Okay, I'm going to set that about right there. We can adjust it later. I'm going to put that little cap on there and screw it down. I'd like a smaller screwdriver, that would be nice. This long electrician screwdriver is kind of kind of difficult. We're going to leave, we're just going to snug those because we're going to come back and, and adjust that later. Now you can check your choke operation. Make sure everything works. Looks good. Next we're going to do is the needle. You want to compare this needle to the old one and I did already. It has the same drop, the same length uh, and I'm this particular one uh, I'm going to use this copper gasket on there that come with a kit because it looks like it's the one that fit the best. Originally I think this had a fiber gasket but the fiber gaskets included in this kit are too small for this so I'm going to use the copper one. Then we're going to take our 14. Yeah, let's have a look at that there. That doesn't look quite right. If something doesn't look right, take it back apart and have another look at it. That looks like that's where it goes. Okay. It has a little collar above it. which kind of gave me question. There we go. And it sticks up just a, just a tad, but it has a little collar underneath it that the gasket or the little copper washer. Just snug, doesn't, don't need to reef on it. No torque wrenches needed. Okay, there you go. There's your top. Now, let's get all the parts together for the bottom, and I'll come back in just a second. I may have done this a little backwards on the PICT2. Uh, on the PICT1, I'm going to do it this way. Um, I'm going to take my diaphragm, and uh, what do we have here? Okay, we've got a little, a little hole here, but it seems to be plugged. with a little metal deal. No, it's just it's where they drilled the passages probably and plugged it. Okay, not a problem. Uh, this particular carburetor only has one hole in the accelerator pump. Of course, the diaphragm can't go this way. It has to go this way. Can go on there whatever way you want to do. Like it's they're all it's all the same. And again, this uh, will stop your flat spots by replacing this Diaphragm. Let's see how this linkage is going to go. Let's see. I'm going to go like that. So this is going to go in the back. Okay, there's a spring here, which is your big spring. A little different than the other carburetor. A little nicer. It's not conical or anything like that. And uh, it fits fits in here, just like that. Okay, and then this has to go towards the back and we're going to use our toothpick hmm. and try to line up line up the holes and let's see here and you find something wrong take it off okay now you see what happened here is this got folded up under and had I put it together it would have pinched that rubber and screwed things all up. So you have to, you have to pay attention and and take your time, 
Don't get in a big hurry. And if things look awry, take it apart again. Shut your telephone off. And I'm going to start with one screw. flashing there. Let's see if we can get that other screw in there. Okay, corner. These gloves are about on their last leg. Not going to tighten this up. Just going to leave it loose. Yeah. Take our toothpick. Make sure our gasket holds good. Oh, that's nice. There you go. Uh, the reason being I'm taking and putting this on first is because this electromagnetic jet uh, is really difficult to work around. So, probably the last thing I'm going to put in. This particular one. I, I, I took apart, and I think I took it apart because I left the jet in it. Does that make sense? I left the electromagnetic jet in it, and I couldn't, I couldn't for some reason, get it sprung away like the other one. And we're going to go caddy corner, give them a little tight. Don't need to crank down on it like that. You shouldn't need any sealant. Unless your body or your carburetor is boogered up. This one seems to be in pretty fair nick. Then, this here went down in there. And this pin went through. Now, the carburetor is this way. So, of course, you, you don't want it going up this way. You want it going uh, where uh, gravity is working towards it. So, put that there. And we're going to have to gently tap that back into place. It was just pressed in. Just as such. There is no pin or clip or anything like that. Now you can check your operation and it works fine. Okay. Uh, next we'll start putting jets in this. This goes here. I'm not quite sure what that is, but it goes there. This is your... Uh, it's an idle jet is what it is or something. And it is plugged up. All right. This is plugged up. After all that cleaning, it's still plugged up. I wonder if I got that out of there. Let me go. Uh, let me go uh, examine this a little closer with some uh, bigger glasses, and I want to make sure that that's absolutely clean. I got some bigger glasses on that, and blew that out with some more air, and indeed, it is clean. That goes right there. It's the one with all the little hole, the, the one that's long. It looks like a flute. I call that your idle jet, but it's not what it is. It's They call it something else, probably. Emulsification tube or something, I don't know. To, you don't need to know the nomenclature uh, as much as you would need to make sure just that everything's uh, blew out and cleaned out. Here's another one too I'm going to take and blow out. Be, be right back with you. I have taken that, put that in there, and I staked it down. You definitely don't want that to come out, drop down into the uh, intake, uh, uh, into the intake, and uh, into the intake and uh, 
and make it uh, uh, wedge a valve open. So don't do that, okay? All right, I staked it in there, and it's just between this and the side of the Venturi as you look down. So when you pump it, uh, the accelerator pump shoots a stream of gas, uh, and that's, uh, that helps richen up uh, the uh, circuit, or richen up the charge so that the engine doesn't huff uh, just raw air. Okay, next is going to be our main jet. Our main jet is clean. Uh, I've checked this also. This is an original uh, Solex main jet. I believe it's a one, I want to say a 116. It says X1, one, X116 on it. And that sits into here, just like this. Let me get my other glasses and look at that. Let's see what that says. Oh no, uh, the main jet is a 120. This is this this has a 120 main jet, and there's going to be a gasket that goes on there. So let's find the gasket. Let me find the gasket that goes on there. I'll be right back with you. By process of elimination, it was this red gasket that went on there, the little fiber gasket, and uh, it literally clipped on. It was it was very tight and it clipped on. But that should provide. good seal okay now let's take a look at our our little needle jet here and we're going to examine the surface of it it looks nice it's conical it's not screwed up and uh, it's it fits and it's not stripped we're going to use the same one over because that one there although it looks like it fits I'm going to try to use the original parts Again, the carburetor is only as good as the sum of its parts. When you start changing this stuff all, all around, I don't know. Okay, we got it snug. All right, not, not really snug, but just I just bottomed it. And she's going to come out two turns, just like the other one. And that will give us a good starting point to, to, adjust, to start adjustments. Okay, let's see what's next. It's a good idea to put 12 volts to this and negative and see that the uh, electromagnetic do, uh, magnet uh, does work in this and it does. Uh, this jet that's been blown out, cleaned, that goes here. The jet is 9, the body is 11. And we can just put a little snug on that, like that. And then it screws into the base of the carburetor, like this, till it bottoms. And I'm going to put a little snug on that. We're good. Next is going to be our original float. It does say Solex on it. And our original pin goes in this little area right here. There's no keeper that holds it in place. Uh, by uh, reason of deduction, there's only the top and screws, a spring, uh, and some studs left. So uh, we should be finished. We don't have any parts left over. That's what you're looking for, is no parts left over. That's what you want. Now, this one, no, this one, no, this one, no, got to be that one then. It does look right. It does look like it fits. Let's flip this over and see if it'll go another way. No, we have an opening there, opening for that, opening for that screw. Uh, huh. That looks good. Okay, that looks all right. You can set your... Uh, top on. I'm going to pull that back just a little bit. There should be no wailing or gnashing of teeth in order to get that on there. It should go quite easily. All of our screws are the same size. There's, I have six of them. One of them goes in front. But all of these are the same length.
we're going to work from the inside out. That is, these two screws are going to be tightened first. But we're just going to snug them a little bit, draw them up a little bit, and do the same with this. And then we're going to tighten just like that, and then we'll be finished. There wasn't a whole lot I could do. Uh, this screw had come out with threads, and, uh, and putting it back in, there wasn't any thread, so I had to put a little bit longer screw in, and sometimes you have to do that. What are you going to do? Jump up and down, nothing you can do. I'm going to put this, let's see how this is going to go, like that, right there. And this little gizmo up front, this little piece of metal holds our spring. There's our spring. Let's see if that's if that's correct. Okay, we're finished there now. Done with that. Both our studs are in, uh, put a gasket on there. It's got to be that one, it can't be that one. Don't know why there was two gaskets in that other set. Maybe they just goofed up. Uh, now I can take and put that aside for when I'm ready. Put another carburetor on that car, or the correct carburetor on that car, I should say. Bag that up, keep it out of the dust. There's your PICT1, PICT2. Uh, I hope uh, I hope I was helpful uh, in uh, demonstrating how to take them apart, put them together, clean them, and such. Uh, a couple of things: uh, the ultrasonic, along with the uh, chem dip, uh, seem to work the best. Uh, be careful about sandblasters or scrapers. Um, you want to, you know, try to clean it, you know, with something plastic or something. Don't uh, scrape it. A toothbrush goes a long ways. Um, I like the Wolfsburg kit, but uh, I don't think truly it was any better than the Made in China kit. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I don't see a lot of difference uh, between this one and that one as far as the parts that mattered, and that were the accelerator pump and the uh, uh, choke uh, diaphragm. Uh, this kit on Rock Auto was $10, and uh, the kit... Uh, with the uh, lawnmower fuel filter, it was 25 on Wolfsburg. So, if I had my druthers to do over again, I'd buy another kit from uh, Rock Auto. That's just my opinion. Um, I hope uh, I hope uh, I was helpful uh, in uh, in showing you how these came apart. And uh, like and subscribe, and comment below. Uh, and I appreciate uh, you being on my channel again. These carburetors here are original German uh, carburetors, and in my opinion, if you're putting together an original engine, these are the ways to go. Uh, they, they, uh, they're just the quality is better. The quality is better, and if all you're, if you're finding a good used one uh, and rebuilding it, it's it's just like one of those stamped fuel pumps, uh, uh, you know, opposed to a Pierberg fuel pump. Uh, 
it just the original Volkswagen stuff seems to be just so much better. Uh, again, thanks for, for being on my channel and thanks for being here. Like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you all on the next one. Bye.